What's up guys, Devadol Gamer here, and today I'm showing off the first DLC for Rainbow Six Siege entitled Black Ice, which was just released for season pass holders. And I and I want to take this time to thank Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. If you like Rainbow Six Siege, you want to see more of Black Ice, I have a link in the description and an annotation showing off the trailer. Definitely check it out. But we're going to really kind of look in depth with these two operators. Now both of them are from the Canadian unit JTF2, which is Joint Task Force 2. And it is the equivalent, it is the Canadian equivalent of Delta Force and the British SAS. It is a counterterrorism unit, but also operates in conventional aspects um, to assist ground forces in combat. Um, and it includes two operators. So we're going to talk a bit about both of them. The first one up is Buck. With his special ability is a skeleton key, which is just a master key shotgun attachment for a weapon. And then we have Frost who is the female member of the unit. Not too keen on that, but hey, you know, quality, let's go for it. Um, who actually has a bear trap mechanism, which is really awesome. But we're gonna take a look at the weapons first of Buck and talk a little bit about him. I like Buck, I like the name Buck. We're gonna start using that. I have, I have some jokes with that that we're gonna use. So Buck's kind of special. He's got a nice, cool ability to him. But first, let's take a look at his weapons. Now, first he has a C8, which is basically the Canadian equivalent of an M4. But his main attraction is the Cammers, which is a single shot FAL battle rifle. This thing is awesome. Um, and then again, for his pistol, Mark 1 9mm, pretty cool pistol. I, I'm not really a fan of it, but, in, well, in real life, but in game, it's, it's pretty cool. So let's talk a bit about his ability, the skeleton key. It's a master key. Now, what this was designed for was. Um, say you're a breacher. Your breacher carries a specific shotgun just for breaching with breaching rounds on his side, usually holster. I've seen them in the machete type holsters. Um, and they would have to switch between their primary weapon and that and fire and then put it away and then go in. Well, the master key eliminated that problem and attached the shotgun directly to the weapon. So all they had to do was walk up, bang, bang, doors down, and then they can go in. That's what it was designed for. But now, in Rainbow Six Siege, we get a nice bridge between medium and long range engagement and a quick switch between short range with the skeleton key. Um, and which is particularly good because the rate of fire for the C8 is 837 rounds per minute. So you're going to blow through that 30 round mag pretty damn quick and then you can just literally in an instant switch over to your skeleton key and just spread the hate. The rate of fire on the skeleton key is actually pretty good, which is which is nice because when you're instead of reloading, you can literally switch to it and just use it as another weapon. So think of it as kind of a, a weapon you can change to instead of your pistol to cause a lot more damage. Which is actually kind of cool because when you get to the CMARS, it's basically think of it as a glass type weapon. Um, you want to sit back and pop people with it and then use the skeleton key to get up close and personal with them. So this is actually a nice little. Um, you know, equipment piece for him that, you know, you get this long range marksman rifle that you can use like glass basically and just, you know, two shot people and then going up a close and bust out the skeleton key. Uh, he also comes with a flashbang grenade, which is nice. And of course your breachy charge, which is also nice because God, you got to love busting down some doors. So that is Buck. Buck is my man. I'm definitely liking him and he disappeared there. <laughs> normal armor, normal speed, nothing too crazy. So now we're going to go down to Miss Frost. Miss Frost is kind of a needle in the haystack, per se. Her weapon loadout is pretty kind of standard, you know. You got the normal, you got a shotgun up close and personal for defenders, which just kind of seems like, you know, the norm for defenders. It is a pump action super 90. It does a nice round of damage, but it actually, for a pump action, has a nice speed to it. You can fire, the fire rate for it is pretty good. The iron sights are pretty open, so it's pretty easy to kind of, use your iron sights not that you need them for a shotgun but it's kind of easy to kind of get in there and actually kind of sway it around it's got a nice look to it nice sound to it the needle in the haystack with her though is this c9 now the c9 is kind of a crazy it's a sterling basically that's that's what it is and um the rate of fire on it's pretty damn slow 575 rounds per minute the cool part about that is it's so slow that the recoil management is super easy and it's super easy to kind of guide it into headshots. Um, not only that, you can single shot it pretty damn quick. With the 32 damage, that's not too bad. You're around the MP5 territory. Um, so single shotting, it's, you know, pretty, pretty standard to do. The only thing though is the recoil is a little high. So when you're kind of aiming um, below objects, it's pretty easy to kind of get it up there into a 
to where it hits the object above. So if you're kind of like aiming under a door, it'll kind of pop up a little bit on you up into the door. So that's not really too big of a problem. Her, her um, equipment piece though, the nice little bear mat trap is pretty cool. We're gonna talk a little more in depth about it um, because I think this is something very unique for this DLC and the way you can use it is actually pretty unique and um, it's something that's really cool. So we'll show some gameplay, we'll talk a little bit about more, more of the operators, my likes and dislikes, but we just got over the gear, all the stuff they have, and uh, we'll talk about what they can do. Frost is the definite game changer in this DLC. The doormat of death is, a com is probably the best gadget in the game at the moment. I really think it really is. It is an aerial denial, area denial system along with a ca perfect counter to shields. You really can't, if you're walking with your weapon up, you're walking with your, you know, a shield up, you can't see it. You really can't. And it's literally gonna drop them instantly. Not only that, but when it drops somebody, it's gonna force their teammates to come and revive them, putting them in a precarious situation. So if you put it in a very open area, like a hallway or a doorway, they're going to have to move into that area to revive that guy or else just take the take the death on the team. Um, what happens is when you actually hit this thing, it'll insta-down you. It will clamp to your leg, you will have to crawl around, and you will be down and needing revive. If Think if you've actually been revived once and you get hit by it again, it's an insta-kill. So if you've already been downed once, and then um, you get revived and you get hit by the doormat of death, you die. Um, this thing's a perfect aerial den area denial system. It really is. Put it at windows, people vault in through windows, boom, they're down. Put it at doorways, they don't pay attention, boom, they're down. Um, top of staircases, you put it at the top of a staircase, boom, they're down. And, you, and not only that, you get three of them. So you gotta think of it as, it's cat can system, but better. Because you can actually blend it in with the shadows of the floor, um, the shadows, you know, the, the environment, uh, rugs, dark colored rugs, um, debris. If they beat down a door, the debris will actually cover it. Um, that's an actually, it's a really good system. It's a really good system to have. Not only that, but for hostage rescue, you can put it around the hostage. And then people up in the last minute, 30 second rush to grab the hostage, hit the doormat of death and get down. It's a perfect, it's a perfect system. Frost is definitely the gem to this DLC. And I think a lot of people are gonna start playing her. She's definitely my go-to defender now. That's pretty much all I play on defense. Not only that, but Frost has some good weapons. You have the Super 90, which is a very awesome fast-firing shotgun. Does a lot of damage, cool open iron sights to it, um, so it's quick and easy to actually kind of go around and you know peek corners with it, see what's down out there. It's not a very obstructive iron sight. Not only that, but the C1 that you get, this fucking machine machine gun, is amazing. Not only is it cool sounding with its suppressor and the little tap 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 tap. Because um, it only has a very a very low rate of fire. It's easy to control. The recoil is very easy. It's easy to kind of get it, keep it on target. It's easy to go into those headshots. Um, it's a very nice submachine gun. I really do like it. It's, you know, it may not be as fast as killing as some of the, you know, these other submachine guns. Um, but it's accurate. It's recoil is very controllable. And it's very nice, just balanced to a submachine gun. I, I really do enjoy it. It's definitely a very awesome gun. My go-to gun with her, definitely. But um, Frost for sure is the game changer with these doormats of deaths. You can really get them around and hide them in a nice little areas. And even on the new map, it can actually kind of kind of fish into the snow and you can actually just use it to hide it in the snow. It's actually a very cool, very awesome uh, and unique piece of equipment. I really do like it. Um, now Buck, let's talk about Buck. Buck is, you know, I do like him and I don't at the same time. I understand the need for the skeleton key, and I like that we're getting into underslung weapon systems here because the next obvious uh, choice is a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. You know, getting a, a 203 would be amazing. Um, but the shotgun in itself only has one use, and it kind of feel like you limit your team by taking it and not taking an actual item that's of any use, really, um, because you're taking the shotgun. The shotgun's really just an offensive weapon. Sure, you can use the underbarrel shotgun to kind of destroy destroy holes and stuff and actually kind of, you know, bust through doors and then switch to your main gun. Or even, you know, use your main gun, you're out, so switch to your, your secondary weapon, you switch to the shotgun real quick and pop, 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 go rush in. I see its use of that, but I still feel like you're limiting the, your attacking team by taking just that, that setup. Um, you know, Buck does have some nice weapons, the C8, 
It's a very fast firing weapon. Um, you can really kind of get in there at medium close range with it and really knock some stuff out. The foul is good at medium to long range, but you have to fire it fast. It doesn't have the damage of Glass's weapon, so you really need to kind of just fire into there very quickly. The recoil is kind of all over the place, so the recoil control is kind of tough. Uh, but it is, it is a good weapon at close range. It definitely is. Um, but it's not going to, you know, you're definitely not taking the place of Glass's weapon system. I feel like an attacker, instead of taking Buck, you want to take something that's of a lot more use. Uh, like, like Fuse. Definitely Fuse and his cluster charges are of more use than Buck's uh, shotgun. And at that point, you have somebody else take Glass. I mean, if, I feel like if you're just taking Buck for the foul, you might as well just take Glass, to be honest. I mean, to be honest, the foul isn't really that great of a weapon. You know, at close range, it's still, uh, and it, it's recoil. It's still a little crazy at close range. But the C8 is definitely, I feel, his go-to weapon. You know, but it is nice to quickly be able to switch to the shotgun. But again, you know, you could use so much more equipment. You could really use so much more. So the operators for this first DLC, I'm liking it. They're promising. I'm, you know, it's actually getting me excited for the DLC, the next few DLCs to see exactly what we get. I feel like this is a very nice, unique group that we have here. But you know, the one thing I do have with the the Black Ice DLC operators is their camo color. They're very lightly colored. So compared to most of the guys that are dressed in black or, you know, dark green or, you know, any of those colors, you kind of don't blend in too well with your shadowy environments or black surroundings. So if you do any nighttime maps, you stick out like a sore thumb. Um, sitting in the shadows, you stick out like a sore thumb. Um, any, any one of those scenarios. But at the same time, on the flip side, your light color camo will help you in out in daytime, uh, white backgrounds, white walls, anywhere where you can actually kind of just blend in with your lighter surroundings. So you, you, I feel like a lot of people are overlooking this fact that you actually need to sit there and be aware of your surroundings and you know what's your what's your background with these operators just because of the different camo pattern that we have compared to um, you know the operators that you have now. They definitely stick out white a bit compared to the your normal black you know camouflage operators but they're definitely cool they're unique frost is one of the coolest operators out there right now um so if you haven't i mean if you don't have it on season pass i believe they're going to cost twenty five thousand renown each um but again all of this is free you're not paying for this dlc you get it for free um in one week but to everybody who has season pass they get to play it now this is definitely cool i'm really like what rainbow six is doing with, their, uh, with the DLC and their operators. I think, you know, there's gonna be so much more potential here, and I'm actually excited to see what we have next. But if you wanna see more Black Ice, I have the trailer in the description below, also in an annotation, uh, so definitely check that out. It, you know, if you, if you wanna see more and their cinematics and stuff, definitely check it out. And again, if you guys like Rainbow Six Siege and you wanna see more of it, let me know in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys later, peace.